Hi, Les from Retired and Living the Dream. And today's video is going to be about did I retire too early at the age of 50? Did I make a huge mistake? Here I am now at 62 years old and been retired now for 12 years. But was it worth it? Did I make a big mistake? Did I retire too early? I'm going to give you two examples of me and my retirement. So I want you to write down in the comments which one you would have chose. At the age of 50 I was very fortunate in that I could retire at the age of 50. I joined the fire service when I was 19 years old and one of the things that the recruitment officer said that I could retire at the age of 50. Well 19 year old, a 50 year old was miles away, it was a long way in the future. So I just thought oh 50 year old, okay normal, normal people retire at the age of 65, okay I thought I'll go for that. So I did my 30 years in the fire service and I did many, many other things whilst I was a firefighter as well, but that's another video. So I got the opportunity re to retire on my 50th birthday and I retired on my 50th birthday. And that was in the year 2010. So now I've been retired for 12 years and I've got to say I've enjoyed every single year of it and I've never been bored. So. So what I'm going to tell you in this video is the choices I had at 50 years old. Now my choices were a little bit limited for what I could do because eight years before I retired I went through a very messy divorce and we, we had a number of houses, we had a number of businesses and one reason or another I ended up going through divorce and losing everything or did I? Watch this video, that's very interesting. And they also went through bankruptcy at the age of 42. So I had eight years to recover. I've always had the positive attitude of, of getting on with life. No matter what happens to you, you just get on with it and make, make do and do the best that you can. And I've got to say, I'm happy with my results 12 years later. So this video isn't meant for the rich and the famous people who've got stacks of money in the bank and can afford to retire at any time. This is for the normal everyday working person and this is who I'm targeting with this video for you to make choices as to what you can do and what you can't do. We all have choices of what we can do and it's never too late to change your mind to do anything. So this is a tale of two retirements and when I retired my income dropped to two-thirds of what I was on so therefore decisions had to be made. So I'm going to go through, these are the type of houses that I could afford at the time. And because my income dropped, now my standards of living would have had to drop to this. So this first house here, it was about eight or nine hundred pounds a month to live in there. And my pension at the time was twelve hundred pounds a month. So as you can see, a massive, massive standard of living drop moving from this to this one which is only four to five hundred pounds a month a massive drop in standards of living so these are the type of things that you've got to realize when you reach retirement that your income if you're a normal average everyday working guy and have got nothing really saved up for the future your standard of living could drop but this is the house that I live in now and I'm going to go further on how I got this house and where I'm living a little bit later on in the video but I used to live in the UK and I used to live in the northeast of England in the UK so not the most expensive place to live in the UK but there are many many places much much more expensive to live in the UK than where I lived so surviving life on two-thirds of my original income from the fire brigade it was going to be a very, very hard battle. It, virtually impossible. I wasn't entitled to any benefits. I would have had to find another job. And life really would have been pretty much the same, working until I was 66 years old. But because I made plans and I made an effort and I looked to change my future, that's why I am where I am today. Looking ahead, planning, and being able to do with something and looking to see what is, is possible. So plan A, this one, living in a, a street house for four or five hundred pounds a month, 
then there's a council tax and then there's the, oh, it just goes on and on and on so I would have been just surviving on the income that I had and that's not viable for me I wasn't prepared to live in a street house <clears throat> I've lived in some very nice houses in my lifetime and for me my standard of living dropped tremendously doing that so in the eight years before I retired I got the opportunity to buy some land in France and I bought a plot of land in France and my intentions were was to build a house in France run a jeep business and live happily ever after now the plot of land that I bought was stunningly beautiful and I'd made the plans to retire to France, run a jeep business and be happy at doing that. I was going to build my own house and the lump sum that I got when I retired from the fire brigade was going to pay to build this house in France. And then 2008 the stock market crashed and we all went into recession, everything went upside down, the, it, it, just, it was a mess 2008. And because of the currency change of values and one thing and another, it worked out it was going to cost me another £45,000 to build the house compared to before the crash of 2008. So I just didn't have another £45,000 to build the house. And I decided then just to put it on hold. And at the time I was with a, a Chinese girl, we were living together. So then we both decided to travel the world for a couple of years and then go back to England, work for a year, both of us, and put the money back that we spent on the round the world trip. That was the plan. So we were going to, whilst the world was resettling and everything was going through austerity, we'd go travel, see the world, and then come back and start all over again. Now I was a qualified electrician. I built my own houses and I was good at DIY. So my employability was very, very good in the UK. I could go away, come back and start all over again. I had my own electrical business. I could have even started that back up again. So my job prospects were very, very good in the UK if I wanted to, to carry on working. But we did around the world for two years traveling and then another bombshell dropped. And it was the fact that my Chinese wife decided she didn't want to live out of a suitcase anymore. She didn't want to travel the world. And I said to her, we can live anywhere in the world if you want to. And she said, no, I want to go back to Redcar, where we lived in the northeast of England, work for the same coffee shop and live in the same flat if she could get it. Well, I wanted more than that. I didn't want to retire and then live back in England, back to the things that I didn't want to do. So I walked out on that relationship and we got divorced. And I carried on my travels, knowing then that I was in a position where I could do exactly what I wanted to do. Now the plan of us both going back to England and working together to put the money back into the bank that we'd spent on our round the world trip, well, that just disappeared, didn't it? And although I could have worked back in England myself and worked for two or three years and put the money back into the bank account and then carry on building my house in France, that dream sort of went because I discovered new, new things that I could do. By talking to many different people around the world, I discovered a whole new lifestyle that awaited me. And it wasn't going to be building a jeet in France. So I've, I've been to Thailand many times before. And I discovered that Thailand was the place for me. So after two years of traveling around the world, I decided to move to Thailand and actually stay here. So I thought I'll give it six months at first, then I fell in love with the country and this is my second retirement plan. So this was my second plan B for retirement. And you look at these houses here on which it was going to take of my income. I've still got the same income, but now I can afford this. I live in a beautiful two bedroom detached bungalow in the countryside beautiful views, five minutes away from a, a beautiful beach and 30 minutes away from one of the most beautiful tropical islands in Thailand. And this is all for the budget of living in this house here. To get this standard back in the UK is unachievable on this amount of money that I have to live on. So when you retire, you have choices. 
living in the wealthiest countries of the world, they should have everything. Opportunities, freedoms, everything like that. But why are people living like this in tents? Why are people going to food banks in the UK? Why are people in poverty in the wealthiest countries of the world? Thailand isn't one of the wealthiest countries in the world, but it's in the top 11 places where people want to retire to. None of the five wealthiest countries in the world are in the top five list. Now, what does that say about living in a wealthy country? Poverty in these countries, I've seen in America, the land of the free, tent cities in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, the wealthiest places in America, and people are living on the sidewalk in tents. I don't see that much poverty here in Thailand. Yes, there is poverty here in Thailand, but not to the extent that there is in America, the wealthy, one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Crime. Crime is everywhere in the world. But with the drugs and the gun crimes, everything that goes on in America is terrible. The crime that goes on in London, I've seen ram raiding, people getting the scooters pinched, carjacking, unbelievable. Crime to that extent doesn't exist here in Thailand. Crime does exist, but very, very little in comparison to America and the United Kingdom. I've decided to move to Thailand to improve my life, my life standards over here is 100% better than it would be if I lived in the UK. We all have choices, we can all do what we want to do in life, but sometimes it's the decision to make the move is the hardest. Family, friends, relatives, I know. But the furthest year away is 24 hours by plane. So it's not too far, the world has shrunk because of travel. 24 hours away from anybody if you needed to go and see your family or friends or daughters, aunts, uncles, whatever. We live in a very small world now because travel, you can get anywhere within 24 hours. Living this lifestyle in Thailand on 1,200 pounds a month. I've done a video here, how to live on 1,200 pounds a month or how to live on your pension. And I've gone through the facts and the figures and exactly how much it costs me to live here. £1,200 a month. I'll put all the figures up here for Australian dollars, Euros and American dollars. And do a comparison. See what your lifestyle would be like if you had to live on this amount of money every single month in your country. And look at the standard of where I live here in Thailand. I'm not suggesting everybody to come and move to Thailand. But sometimes you need to have a look where you are, where you want to be, and the lifestyle that you want to live. And sometimes that means moving from your home country to a, maybe it's a better country. I would say Thailand is 100% is better than the UK. It's not perfect, but then again, I don't think any country is perfect. You would have thought the wealthiest countries in the world would have been the perfect countries to live in. China, America being the top two. Look at all the things that's going on in China. Look at all the things that's going on in America. So that was just a quick video about my two retirement lifestyles. So which one would you have picked? So have a look at my many other videos on lifestyle, living here in Thailand, getting divorced, going through bankruptcy. If you're going through a hard time at present, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Everybody can make decisions, life-changing decisions. It's in your hands. You can make your own future. Nobody else, just you. So thanks for watching the videos. Till the next one, bye for now.